Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'm going to be going over this week's problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, uh, feel free to go to our blog, and the link to that will be in the description. So, this week's problem of the week tells you about two people, person A and person B, and it tells you about how they run. And what we're going to solve is we're going to find out how long it takes them to travel 100 meters, just like in the 100 meter dash in the Olympics. We hope you're enjoying that as much as we are. Uh, so let's get started. So for person A, uh, we're going to start there. The acceleration is given as 4 meters per second squared for the first 20 meters. So important to note is that we're given, I, I've read, drawn out the velocity time curve. We're going to solve for that. But it's important to have this because the area underneath the curve gives the distance traveled. And basically, for each of these situations, we're going to find out how long it takes, what time, at what time does that area under the entire curve, both parts of it, equal 100 meters put together. So that's how we're going to solve this. Since I've divided it into two parts, I'm going to be solving the first one in blue. So I'll start by rewriting the acceleration. And of course, if you integrate the acceleration, you'll get a velocity. And that's very important for our purposes, because we have the velocity time curve, which is necessary. So and of course, since this is the Olympics, we are starting from rest. We are also starting from position of 0, but I'll get to that. So at times t equals 0, we should have a velocity equal to 0. So c is equal to 0, so I'm just going to erase that. So I'm going to integrate it again, because of course velocity uh, integrated should give you position. And again, like I said earlier, initial position is 0, because you're at the Olympics. Starting from a higher up point would be not legal, so I'm going to erase that again. And it's important to note that this happens for the first 20 meters. So we have a position function. We can use that to find how long they are traveling for this with this acceleration in order to get that far. We can also find what their velocity by the time this is done is. So that's a very important step. We're going to put this in, set this equal to 20. And the solution comes very easily. But this time is equal to the square root of 10, which is also roughly 3.16 seconds. So that is the important first step. Now, from this, we can find what velocity is at the end of that acceleration. And for the duration of the rest of the race, we know that since the acceleration is 0, that velocity is going to be constant. That's how fast person A is going to be traveling until the end of the race. So very simply, we can just put in 3.16 into this equation to get that velocity. And we see that person A is traveling at 12.64 meters per second by the end of that 20 meter stretch. That's very important. And then we're going to move on to the second part of the problem to solve it, which is basically finding the area under this curve. Because we already know that this area under this is 20. We know that the area under this has to be 80. And we know everything we need to know. We know uh, what time it is. We know how fast the person is going. And it's just a rectangle. So the area under the curve is quite simply um, velocity multiplied by time. So I've named this second part t2. So simply base times height gives the area underneath this curve. And we know that since it's a 100 meter race, we have 20 meters already. We have 80 left to go. Therefore, solving for t2 gives a value of 6.33 seconds. And in order to get the total time it took for, to run this whole stretch, we have to just simply add them together. It's pretty straightforward. And we get a total time, which I will write in blue over here. Nine point four nine seconds, which is very very fast, 
I believe that does beat the world record. <laughs> so on that note, we'll move on to person B. It is a little more complicated looking. That's why I saved it for the second part. The acceleration for the beginning is a little more uh, tricky. There's more parts to it, but the second part is just as easy as the first part of the first part of the first person. So let's go ahead and solve that. It's not too bad. I'm going to start by rewriting the acceleration function as before. And again, we use the same process. We're going to integrate. And this gives us the velocity. And like I said earlier, we're going to call c is equal to 0. No need to include it because it is 0, and we determined that for the same reason as it was before. I'm going to integrate again in order to get position, just like before. OK, and from that, we can continue on with our problem. We are given that this, this acceleration is used for the first two seconds of the race. So we can just plug in t is equal to 2 and find out what distance was traveled in that time and also what velocity that person is at by the end of that stretch. So just plugging that in, uh, we get We get a velocity of 13.33 meters per second and a distance traveled of 7.33 meters, which means that there is left over uh, 92.67 meters left to travel. And this person at that point, at two seconds, is, at, is traveling at 13.33 meters per second, which is very fast. The second part is much easier because the acceleration function is so simple. We can take this as a different part and say so the area under this curve just has to equal the rest, which is 92.67 meters. And so the equation becomes pretty simple. We start with the acceleration that is given to us in the problem. At this point, the person is decelerating. So as you can see, the curve goes down. Also, the acceleration is negative. So I'm going to integrate this. And there is, at this point, since we're calling it a new section, there is a constant to be added here. It's simply 13.33, because that is how fast the person is going at the top of that curve. It is important to take that into account. And in terms of position, I'm going to integrate this as we have done before. It's very simple. And uh, for this position, we're going to just take into account that this is a new section. So we're going to set this equal to the area that we want it to have covered. It's going to be equal to 92.67. And if we solve for t, we can easily do that with the quadratic formula. I I'm going to assume you're familiar with it, and I'm going to give you the value of t. Obviously, we take the logical correct answer from the quadratic equation, and it ends up being this. You can get the total time traveled in this whole stretch by adding the two times together. We know that the first time was two seconds. We know that the second time, we just solved for it. It's uh, 7.14 seconds. So I'm going to just add those together and we get a total time of 9.14 seconds. So as you can see, person B beats person A. 
by a pretty significant margin by the Olympic standards, but both of them are going quite fast and do shatter the world record, so I think kudos to both of them. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more problems like this, you can click our link up here to see more problems of the week. They're very fun. I like them a lot. Uh, you can click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you could visit us at centermath.org. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy the Olympics. <laughs>